Traveler, the Calyx Qual Incident. Uh, this is a limited series run. This will be session one. Uh, the last session was session zero where they created characters and uh, they got a little bit of a start to the adventure. Um, before we begin, <clears throat> let's thank the friends of the Greenwater Guild Hall. <clears throat> the first on the list, if you're watching on Twitch, you can scroll down. You'll see some tiles there. Those tiles link to these sites. Um, if you don't see the tiles, click on my profile image and they will pop up. Uh, the first on the list is TNC. That stands for Talon and Claw. They make beautiful wooden uh, tabletop gaming accessories like dice vaults and dice trays. Their new dice tray actually has a slot in it that will hold their Council of Seven dice vault. And it, the dice vault has a magnetic seal on it and keeps your dice all nice and tidy. They also make beautiful DM screens and they are now, I don't know if they're prototyping it or if it's a proof of concept, I'm not sure. But they are in the process of making a gaming table, which I would be excited to see. And they have a full line of uh, cutting boards. So if you like to serve meat and cheese trays while you are gaming, this would make an excellent addition. One of their sets has uh, map artwork on the on the cutting board uh, from the artist Devin Rue. So you'll want to definitely check them out. Next on the list is Speechless Bard. She makes wonderful leather products such as covers for your core rule books and uh, she has a full line of dice bracelets. Um, popular one is the pride bracelet where every dice on the on the uh, bracelet is a different color <clears throat> and uh, she does all of that handmade it is all hand stitched hand painted uh, etched the whole thing um, so definitely check her out she does wonderful work and last on the list is the fable beard company fable beard company makes beard bombs oils uh, butters co-wash and beard wash um, each profile uh, scent profile is a different fantasy character. Uh, for instance, right now I'm still working my way through my holiday stash. I have I am wearing Jack Frost, which is uh, cedar, pine needle, and a peppermint chill. Um, definitely check them out. They now have a full line of CBD products as well, so you will want to look into that. Where we left off, uh, our two travelers um, created their their characters and they have purchased a Type S scout ship and they have made some modifications that they could afford and their first mission uh, for the uh, scout base at, uh, where was that? Let me double check that, let me bring up the Traveler map. Uh, the scout base at Heratus uh, sent them on a mail run uh, so they jumped from Kratos to Prime and then jumped from Prime to Chachi Walidique and they got paid a pittance for the small amount of mail that they brought a couple of data canisters uh, full of mail messages uh, for the populace of Chachi Walidique um, <clears throat> the uh, planet is mostly water, I would say probably 90% water. I don't remember exactly what the percentage is, but it's, it is an ocean world, except for the polar ice caps. Most any of the land that does poke up through the surface is rocky and very small. The largest archipelago on the planet is where the, type, uh, the Class B starport is. And while they were on the, or in the starport, um, they decided to get rooms at the resort that is off of the the starport and they were contacted by uh, a <clears throat> woman uh, in the world government let's see she is uh, Alice Colzane the senior assistant to deputy minister of off-world liaison and she hired them because the world government has a project that they are doing called the Calico project and this world at one time was a part of uh, the Sindillian, or Sindillian Empire. And uh, when that empire failed um, due to um, infighting and pretty much, I mean, for lack of a better term, insane emperors, um, the, the world sustained uh, nuclear damage 
uh, orbital bombardment and the populace of this planet used to live completely underwater in fabulous high-tech cities uh, when that happened uh, when the nuclear devices went off uh, most of the population that could uh, was able to evacuate and now lives on the surface and <clears throat> When they were coming into port, flying uh, overhead, they could see a number of these floating cities. And a lot of times you would think, you know, oh, well, it's a science fiction game, so these are high-tech cities. No, they're not. They are actually, they look a lot like cargo containers that are floating on big empty oil drums. And they are lashed together and stacked high. And people are literally living on top of each other from what they could see coming into port. And so uh, this city, they've learned, um, it was a nuclear detonation went off underwater and caused enough damage for the occupants to flee um, in the distant past, probably close to a thousand years ago. Um, however, um, it is able to be rebuilt and salvaged. And so the world government has this project to do just that. And they have purchased uh, a couple of ship reactors from a shipbreaking yard um, off-world and they have the auxiliary um, standby reactor which is smaller up and running and right now the city is underwater it is it the base of it rests at 1100 meters under the ocean and um, this reactor is is running um, they have 200, close to 200,000 people on the in the city that are working to rebuild it. Um, however, the main reactor is not online, and the company that they hired to put in these reactors got them put in, and then just before they got to the point where they were going to turn on the main reactor, this company bailed. And so this reactor sits, and they don't have anybody on world that is capable enough of getting this thing running. And when they, the uh, liaison found or heard that the travelers were in system aboard their ship, the Obi Wan Jabrobi, um, the liaison contacted them with the pretty much with the idea that, oh, you guys fly on a spaceship, so you know about reactors. Hey, we'll hire you to go down there and fix this thing. And if all it requires is for you to smack the damn thing with a spanner, then so be it, do that, and uh, we will pay you to do that. And they agreed that they would pay, that the liaison world of the world government would pay them uh, 100,000 credits each, uh, so a total of 200,000, to go down there and fix this damn thing. And if, if uh, there are extraneating circumstances, they will get paid a bonus as well. So, the, the rub of this is, the, the question that, uh, that is going to be asked here, um, you can purchase just about, well, a lot of things in the Starport. Um, the Starport has, there is uh, a commercial outlet center here um, that you can buy. If you want to buy tool, engineering toolkits, for example, you can do that. Um, also, there is uh, Interstellar Ordnance located here uh, that specializes in weaponry. Uh, mostly they, they specialize in guns for uh, the naval or mercenary forces. However, they do um, have a section of personal firearms for the discerning customer. Now, having said that, the planet has a law level of seven, which means you're not allowed to bring anything bigger than a knife and maybe a stun gun out of the port. Um, how you want if how you want to deal with that is up to you. So, I mean, like a possibility could be, you know, you go to um, hold on here. Let me grab this other book. You know, let's say you go to Interstellar Ordnance and um, you buy. Dum -da -dum -da -dum. As an example, if you go, let's say you go to Interstellar Ordin Ordnance and you want to purchase body pistols. Uh, body pistols are manufactured from 
uh, plastics and cultured bone, making them difficult to detect using conventional weapon scanners. Um, so, uh, it increases the difficulty for an electronic sensors check to detect him to very hard. So they would have to roll a 12 plus to find these weapons on you. Um, if you wanted to purchase a like an engineering toolkit and hide these body pistols in the engineering toolkit, uh, you could probably do that and get away with it. But the Gauss pistols that you both, I believe you're both carrying Gauss pistols. Uh, that's gonna set off an alarm probably right away. Cause all they'd have to do to detect it would be an eight plus. So I have a question. Uh -huh. I have like advanced electronics training. I went to background in the military. How likely would it be that I could disassemble a weapon and carry the part in the engineering kit and then reassemble when I got to my destination? Because I feel like that's a big part of military training, being able to disassemble a gun quickly. Correct. So, so, for, so, so that and a one for electronics, could I disassemble a more advanced weapon so that it didn't look like anything and get it through security? So in this situation, it wouldn't be your electronic skill you would use. You would use your gun combat skill plus your intelligence or EDU modifier, your choice, whichever is higher. My gun, uh, let's see, my gun combat is two. So you would have a two, and then what's your intelligence or EDU modifier? My EDU is plus one. So that would give you a plus three to your roll as opposed to their um, their electronic sensors check to check for weapons. And they would have to get, so they have a plus two to their, to their role and they have to get an eight plus. However, um, I, because you are disassembling the item, I'm going to give you a boon on that. So you get to roll three dice and take the higher of the two rolls and uh, then the question is, do you want to do that for both pistols and hide them in a, in your toolkit? Well, so, uh, Captain, that's a question for you too. Yeah. Because if we do both, then we're, I'm assuming then we have to do two checks? No, I'll let you do it with one. one. Okay, we don't have to do it one for each weapon. Right. Like twice the weapons would be twice as likely to get bought it, but if, if we only do one check, what do you think? Is it worth the risk? I don't know what kind of trouble we'll get into if we get busted. The law on the planet is for lawbreakers. Um, generally, um, there's two types of situation for people that live on the planet. Um, they are usually uh, incarcerated to do hard time in the um, shittier portions of the workforce. Um, so working in fishery plants or whatever. Um, and for a lot of those people, because they are already down on their luck, which is what sent them to crime in the first place, when they when their sentence is done, a lot of them end up going back to work in those places anyways, because that's where the jobs are. The For off-worlders, in a lot of cases, if people are uh, Incar they don't bother to incarcerate off-worlders. They, assuming that if you have a ship, you are just deported and told to leave. Okay. Um, if okay. you don't have a ship, <laughs> the world government will pay for a low berth, which means that you would be cryogenically frozen on the next transport out to wherever it's going and deposited in the ass end of the universe. Okay. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to quickly and discreetly disassemble two weapons and hide them in the engineering kit as part. Okay. Go ahead and make your roll. Okay. 12 plus three, 15. Okay, they only got a 12. So you have the two Gauss pistols disassembled and hidden in your in your engineering toolkit. Um, th when you are leaving, uh, they scan you um, as you go into the loading bay area over here. 
Um, they scan you with hand wands. Um, they only give a cursory glance at your toolkits and send you on your way. And how you are going to travel to the city of Calixqual is aboard um, a cargo submarine called the Habley. And the Habley comes up in this lagoon um, and takes on uh, cargo par spare parts and things like that um, heading for Calixqual. And an, elder, an older gentleman, the captain of the Habley, um, a Captain Joseph Brimley, who looks like let me see here. Really? Does, he have, does he have diabetes? He's got the diabetes. Um, <laughs> actually, I think. Yes, I do. This is the good ship Habley. Uh, there he is. And that is Captain Joseph Brimley. He. Uh, uh, he comes out and he's smoking a pipe and he looks like a, a um, the arch typical sea captain. He's got an old battered captain's hat and he's wearing a dark blue uh, well worn and frayed sweater and he's smoking a pipe. He's got a long white beard and he says, ah, off worlders, I, I hear you, you be spacefarers. I imagine that spacefaring is a lot like uh, submarining. Uh, welcome aboard the good ship Habley. And keep in mind, it is a ship. It's not a boat. And he points to a um, a life raft in a survival kit on the side on the side of the con tower. And he says, "If you'll be looking for a boat, there's one right there, and you're welcome to it. Welcome aboard the Habley." And the Habley, uh, you notice as you're coming aboard towards the con tower. There is a name plaque that gives the name of the ship. Cool. Now, it it will take about a week to get from the starport to Calixqual. Um, during that time, the Habley will be traveling um, at a cruise depth of 500 meters underwater. Um, you be coming from a scout ship, uh, they. The captain uh, ushers you aboard, you climb down into the Habley. Coming from a scout ship, you're used to cramped conditions. Um, I mean, this was, I mean, you just started with the with the scout ship, so maybe you're not used to that cramped of conditions, um, but it is tight in there. This is even more cramped. And the Habley has a crew of 30. Um, you are given um, a couple of racks in the bunk area and uh, uh, the Habley quickly loads their cargo and gets underway. Um, the captain invites you to uh, dine with him that evening. He would like to discuss your experiences as spacefarers and compare them with uh, his knowledge of being a submariner. Great. So Okay, so during during the meal, um, you you come into the uh, captain's dining cabin, and it's him and the first mate, and uh, and the two of you, and their lead engineer, and uh, it is it is a fairly nice dining cabin, uh, well worn. The there's a, a very nice wooden table that clearly has come from off world because you haven't seen a single tree on this entire planet, and uh, uh, they are serving, of course, seafood. Um, not the best seafood, but um, he's he's had the ship's cook break out. Um, the higher end food for guests, um, which means that uh, you're actually getting real seafood as opposed to the normal staple of the populace, which is like a seafood paste, which has been described as the most soul crushing food <laughs> in the entire galaxy. Um, but this, you're actually having, you know, uh, fillets and, and a shrimp like um, deep fried prawn thing that they have on the planet um and he he uh everybody sits down at the table and he says so 
have you seen much of of the galaxy? I admit to my I admit that I myself have not been off world ever. Cameron, you might be. I think you might be muted. Yes, I was. Mm -hmm. um, I spent four years as a uh, wanderer in space, so I'm sure I have many tales from that. That's probably true. Uh, so, yeah, I, uh, are, are the cramped conditions aboard the Habley uh, similar to your ship? Is what similar to our ship? Oh, uh, this, this ship? Yes. Yeah. There's fewer people on our ship, but it's, it's pretty much the same other than that. Interesting, uh, interesting. My time in the, in the Navy made me used to a, a tight rack, so this feels like home. Oh, well, that's, that's good to know. I'm sure that some of the crew will be disappointed. I think a lot of them were looking forward to scaring some off with our with our tight confines and travel under the sea. Um, the... The meal goes on. It seems uh, both of you. Hold on here. You know, it might help if I had a list of skills. That's something for me to add to my wooden DM screen from Talon and Claw. Let's see here. Um, I'll allow, uh, I'll allow you guys to make a carouse check. Oh, I have, I have carouse. Hold on, go for it. I know how to party. <laughs> okay, so it's two, is it one or two? Uh, right. so roll 2d6 and add your carouse skill rank, uh, plus your social okay. skill rank. Okay. Or your social okay, modifier. Five. What'd you get? Five. Okay. That was that was two d six plus my crowd is zero. Okay. And then my social is plus one. Okay. So you got a total of five. Okay. Um. I got. I got seven. Not very good either. Well. Perhaps not, but so you were able to uh, make yourself um, the two of you are able to make yourself amenable um, to Joseph, uh, Captain Joseph. He, uh, Captain Brumley, seems to um, respect you. He may not be your friends, uh, but he he is he definitely respects you uh, for what you you do, and he's able to um, draw parallels between what you do and what he does. And after about <clears throat> three days, um, he uh, Captain Brimley comes and invites you to come up to the con tower, the Habley, or I'm sorry, to the observation deck. Um, the Habley is going to surface, and he informs you that the world government pays a subsidy to cargo ships and fishing vessels to occasionally uh, surface and take barometric readings of the weather. And when you when you step out onto the observation deck, um, it is a fairly bleak but spectacular view of this uh, alien world that you've never set before have been out on and and you see this um, almost endless sea and you can see in the distance that there are icebergs it is quite chilly um, and the uh, there are icebergs floating in the water and you can see that there's a storm front coming in from the north and um, basically you get to spend some time uh, out on the ocean uh, while the captain and his uh, science officer take some barometric readings and that takes about an hour and then you climb back underneath and continue on your way. 
Um, here's, if you scroll down, there's a nice picture of the Habley underwater. Cool. About another two days, <clears throat> and you can feel the sub start to slowly descend deeper. And the, the Habley has been cruising at just under 500 meters, and now uh, it is descending to about, a, about 700 meters. And as you're descending, you can hear the hull kind of creak. Um, and you know, every once in a while you hear a, a, a bang as the pressure builds against the hull. And um, on the bridge, as you're on the bridge and you're descending, uh, Captain Brimley turns to you and says, oh, don't worry, uh, the, the Habley's been rated for 950 meters. That's, that's the engineering safe deck. There's usually a little bit more available. And the ship descends and in the distance, now there's no outside viewports, but the Habley has a number of external sensors that uh, show uh, uh, do a pretty good job of showing uh, what's going on outside the submarine. And you can see uh, this underwater view and you can just make out through the murky depths that there is this, what appears to be a tall, thin spire sitting on the seabed floor. And you can see a number of lights moving around the, the, uh, this thin spire. And as you get closer, um, the Habley kind of descends a little bit deeper to about 750 meters, and you can start to make out uh, features of this tall, thin spire. And in fact, it is not thin. It's just exceptionally tall. The, the entire city of Kalisqual is from seafloor to sur or just below the surface is a thousand meters. And so, it, from a distance, it looks very thin, but it's not. You can see that this city um, comfortably would house about a million people. Um, and the, the tip of the city never quite, the, the top of the city doesn't break the surface. But it does have calm antennas that go up and these antennas jut just above the surface so that they can have co communications with uh, the mainland, well, quote unquote, the mainland or actually other floating cities. As you're approaching, you can hear, you can see on the sensors and the sonar picks up a loud explosion. Uh, go ahead and make an electronic sensors check. Both of us or one of us? Whichever of you want is better at sensors. Can make it. Sensor? Yeah, I don't know. Is that just electronics or is that something else? It would be electronics. Oh, okay. I got a, I got a one. Need yeah. You can you can both make a check. Okay. Whoa. Oh, it doesn't take. I take gonna, I'm going to pick up some real dice because this virtual dice is not. <laughs> yeah, I, I am. I am not a fan of virtual dice. Yeah, it's just something I just Yeah, I failed big time. I only got four. Okay, so you can see that this explosion went off, but there's there's really, as far as uh, Ching Shi can see, there's no context as to what the hell just happened. Right. <laughs> being being 750 meters underwater and seeing that there's an explosion of some sort with no context can be a bit alarming. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Okay. Go ahead and make your, your electronic sensors check. So you can add your EDU modifier plus your uh, one for electronic sensors to your 2D6 roll. Okay, so I rolled a nine and then I'll add one for my electronics thing to make 10 and my EDU 
rank is plus two, so it'd be twelve all together. Okay. Hi. So yeah. Um, So you you check the sensor and and you're able to see something that Ching Shi missed, and so you look down and you can see that this explosion goes off and you can see three large, fairly large objects. Um, they when I say large, they're about half the size of the Habley, um, and the Habley, being a cargo sub, is you know it it has. Um, It has a shipping weight of 110 tons. So you're looking at three of these things that are roughly 50 tons each moving away from this explosion. And Captain Brimley leans over. He goes, oh, don't be worried about that. That just be a squid bang. It's a squid? Is that what they said? He said it, the explosion was a squid bang. Uh, he says here on... on uh, Chachiwalitakwe, we have a native life form uh, called a pseudo squid. Uh, they grow quite large. Uh, they tend to hunt in packs, and usually they usually they leave us alone. But if we're running through their feeding area, it tends to piss them off, and they can sometimes group in packs, and or they they venture too close to the city, and they can be uh, quite a nuisance. But they're not a big problem. Uh, we've we've uh, kind of put together some uh, personal protection torpedoes that we send out that causes a large explosion. It doesn't really hurt them much, but they it, it dissuades them and they tend to to move away when that happens. Plan. The Habley descends further and uh, it links up with a dock, and so. And again, if you scroll down, you will see the city of uh, Kalixqual. The docking section is actually here. Or, no, I guess it's about midpoint. So it is here in this habited zone, inhabited zone. Um, and as you're docking, um, as the helmsman is docking the Habley, Captain Brimley explains to you, he says, well, you know, we can't go any any deeper. The main reactor of the of Kalixquel is way at the bottom. Um, it, they have anchors. It's 1,100 meters down. Uh, I, I we wouldn't be able to dock there for any safe amount of time. Uh, but they they have some work subs that uh, operate down there. I understand there's plenty of workers down there. The main inhabited section is far higher. We have the main the main dock here. The section above the inhabited zone is partially flooded and has not been repaired yet. The section below the inhabited zone is partially flooded and hasn't been repaired yet. There is a lower work area and then uh, the reactor on the ocean floor or really just below the ocean floor is where this main reactor is sitting. Um, and in which case that's where they want to send you all the way to the bottom. Um, so the Habley docks, and um, you you can hear a large bang, and then like a grapple grab on, and you can hear the hiss as the air, a cargo airlock dock locks on, and, and the bay doors open, and it cycles, and then uh, empties out all the the water in the main airlock, and then it's safe for you to uh, depart. And as you come out onto or into Kalixqual, you are greeted by a, a throng of people. Some of them are, most of them are wearing um, um, like work jumpsuits, um, but a couple of them are dressed um, rather well. Uh, I guess you could say it's a uniform, but um, they all have a patch on their shoulder that looks like this, uh, patch here, which is the insignia of uh, the city of Kalixqual, and you meet this gentleman whose name is Sinclair Krenoff. He is quite young, but he is the administrator of the city. And all these people, the workers and everybody, as you step off the ship and you're carrying your toolkits, they all 
treat you like you're visiting ambassadors or dignitaries. You are hot shit because you're going to get things running and everybody is excited to see you. And, and uh, Administrator Sinclair Krenoff, he comes up and shakes both your hands. He says, oh, welcome, welcome, uh, Chin Chi and, and Captain Smith. Uh, welcome to the city of Kalixqual. Uh We have... Uh, we we've set up a uh, uh, a small um, buffet for you, and uh, we we have a meeting area set up so that you can meet everybody. And they quickly, hurriedly rush you through. And all of these workers in the habited zone, it's not just um, construction workers and things like that. But you actually see that they have like small restaurants and and uh, like a a bar set up for these these workers to have some kind of off off time um, and you see children so these these workers moved to the city with their entire families and um, as you're walking through the corridors um, it's not unlike being on board a spaceship uh, or rather a station um, it reminds you of lot a lot of like a high dock um, about that sitting in geosync orbit over a planet it just um i mean it doesn't feel like what you would think of as quote unquote a city but more like you're inside a space station except that you're you know 750 meters underwater and um he leads you into a um into a reception area uh, where they have a buffet laid out uh, the buffet, he, he immediately apologizes. He says, I, I, I know that you're probably used to much better dining fare. Um, I really apologize. The buffet is not exactly what I wanted, but uh, it's what we, it's the best that we could scrounge together um, on such short notice. Um, it's typical, uh, it's better than what the typical island city dweller would get, but um, it's not much above preserved starship rations. Um, it consists of flavored noodles, crispy seaweed flakes, and a variety of dishes made with prawn-like creatures. And you're, there's a number of these, these uh, you know, administrator office type people standing around, and they all, they all want to come over and introduce themselves and shake your hands. And, um, and Sinclair uh, says to you that... Um, um, he says, I, I'm sure that you're going to want to, to get started as soon as you can, uh, but that can wait until the morning. Uh, you know, I, I, I plan to give you a, a brief tour of Calix Qual, um, and, uh, and then we've, we've set up a, a private suite for you to stay the night, and we can get started first thing in the morning. Sounds good. Great. Um, he says, uh, is, there, is there anything that, that you think that, you'll, that you're going to need? Um, I think we brought all the equipment that we require. Excellent, uh, if excellent. I could, I, if I could find a quiet workbench place to uh, have my tools for tomorrow, that would be great. Oh, certainly, certainly. Yes, uh, in, in your suite, there will there'll be a, a, a work table that you can go ahead and work on uh, setting out the tools that you'll need for the morning. Excellent. And he says, um, he then leads you out and says uh here let me give you a brief tour of the city and uh he he leads you out and he gives you a short tour of the main habitat uh, habitat section um and you you realize that this habitat section is several uh decks high and you can see that there are um like metal stair stairwells that go up and down you don't see a lot of elevators um, there are a couple of elevators, but most of them are designated for, uh, specifically for cargo transfer, things like that. Um, but you can see that this, that the habitat section is several decks high. And at one point you come to, towards the lower section, uh, towards the secondary reactor section, you see that there is a, um, pressure door that is sealed shut. And there is there is uh, some red tape across it, and the red tape says uh, on the in black letters, uh, "No entry." And Sinclair points that he says, uh, "This is 
This leads to the some of the lower sections. Uh, they haven't been completely cleared out yet. We want to keep the populace out of there until it's completely safe to go in there. Um, he says, uh, however, I kind of suspect that there's a black market going on uh, for some of these workers who have um, looted spare parts or things like that and that they're selling them on the black market to workers on the lower level. Uh, I, I can't really confirm that, but I have a I have a suspicion that people are sneaking in and out of this area. He says, but not to worry, we have everything well under control. And a, a black market of any kind in any large city is, is going to be something that you just can't get around. Fair enough. Um, He leads you towards a, a complex of apartments um, and leads you to an empty suite. He says, these, these have been cleared out and this will be your suite for the evening. As you're coming towards the apartments, you see that there's a little girl and she's holding a cat. And, and she, she comes up to both of you. She says, are you, are you the engineers that are going to get the city working? Sure are. And she, she, her cat meow. Um, is she's the cat's looking at you. And she says, "I'm so excited." She turns around, and runs off with her cat, and he opens the door to your suite, and it is it, it is like an apartment suite with two bedrooms, and in the main living area there is a uh, monitor for uh, you know TV kind of thing, and then there's a small uh, workbench there and uh, a small kitchenette and then two rooms. He says, all right, here's your suite. Um, have a good night and uh, I will see you first thing in the morning and we'll get started. We'll get cracking on this main reactor. I am so excited. And he leaves you and the door shuts and you're in your suite. What would you like to do? Um, I would like to look around for potential surveillance. Like, are we being, are we bugged? Are we being watched on video? any signs of surveillance because I don't want to put guns together in a space. <laughs> right, right. Uh, go ahead and make a, hmm. Do you have, hmm. <laughs> that is a very good, good question. Okay, I, I don't, did you bring any kind of scanner or Let's see here. Let me see. I think I might have something. Let's see. Oh, gadgets and yeah, essentials. I got some sort of sensor. I got some scientific kit, Geiger counter. Does it, would a scientific kit have something like that? You might be able to put something together with a scientific kit. Um, let's see here. Probably, yeah, you're probably correct. I'm going to also assume that both of you um, are equipped with mobile comms. Um, basically, a mobile com, um, it'll be a, a TL10 mobile com. It's basically like a like a smartphone. Yeah, I can't leave home without that. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of important. Um, but let me double check something here. I want to make a medical investigation about why everyone's so damn chipper. <laughs> well, they're so chipper because, um, well, I don't know a medical investigation would work, but you can make, you can make a, um, you can make a recon or carouse check and you could probably get some info. Okay. And then I'll just write some questions. <laughs> 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 they're, they're about to turn into Reaver. They're all about to turn into Reaver. Oh, I got snake eyes. That's not good. Okay, I didn't learn a damn thing. Here we go. I got 11 this time. So, uh, Ching Shi, 
I'm going to say that uh, you have uh, on you a EM probe. Okay. Um, it detects electromagnetic transmissions. Uh, it can be used as a diagnostic tool when examining equipment or when searching for hidden bugs or devices. A nine. So you got an 11? Yes. Okay. On, on the crowds, so why are people so happy? So on your crowd, on your crowds check, you kind of wander around the apartments area and then you, you pass by a small um, kiosk that is selling um, seafood ramen noodles. Um, and uh, the couple of people that are there, you, you talk with them and you learn from these people that you're really important because the planet is, so <laughs> Kalinskwal has a population of over 10 million people, almost 11 million, that are crammed onto these floating wreck heaps of man-made islands that are made out of cargo containers um, that are living on top of each other. So, the, and there's no land. So the people of Cal or the people of Chachi um are severely crowded and over. The, there's an overpopulation problem, and the world government. So this city, Calixquel, um was originally rated to have a million occupants. Uh, living comfortably. The world government plans to put uh, between two and three million in here. And yeah, the city of Calixquil will be um, overcrowded, but they'll be far more comfortable than they were living uh, in these floating cities. And the really the only thing stopping further, uh, you know, work on the city is the fact that the main reactor is down. If you can get the main reactor online, then everything is just, it's going to be a domino effect and everybody's going to have some place to live and life's going to be way better on the planet. Got it. Got um, it. What you learn um, is that um, <laughs> the other thing that you learn with that is that the people of Chachiwalitaque are a little bit, um, they have a little bit of a, a angst problem uh, because um, the people on the planet have a tendency so if something is subpar or um, or not so good they refer to it as being close to the water and the reason for that being is that the people that are higher up or wealthier live higher in, uh, above the water in these floating trash heaps and so they refer to things that are, you know, cheap or not so great to be close to the water. And the people of Chachiwalitaque, or, the, or I'm sorry, the people of uh, Calixquel are like, we live under the water and we have things better. So, you know, fuck those guys. Um, I like it. And um, so because of all of this, the success of the city hinges on you. Mm, okay. No pressure. Right, no pressure. No pressure. <laughs> All right, so uh, now I want to sneak around and look for uh, for bugs, devices, and watching devices. Okay, so. go ahead and make an electronic sensors check with your probe. Okay, I'm gonna probe some stuff. <laughs> so electronic plus two d six. Is there anything else to add? Uh, you can add your edu modifier. Okay, so that's one, two, eleven. Okay. You scan around, and uh, the only EM transmissions that you're getting is from the view screen that basically plays uh, a loop of Calix Quill daily hot topics uh, from the top, uh, from the TV. Um, but you're not you're not picking up any listening devices or anything like that. Okay. So then. I I'm going to reassemble the weapons because between how badly they need us to be here, plus the fact that Elisa Zane promised us three quarters of a million, plus the fact that we're the only people that can fix it, we're probably okay. Probably. So you're going to reassemble your, your weapons, go ahead and make a gun combat check plus your EDU score. Okay. 
You know, and on top of that, I'm going to allow you to also add your engineering uh, score because it's kind of a um, it's kind of a synergy okay. bonus. Okay, in that case, twelve. Okay, yeah, you have no problem. You reassemble your Gauss pistols. Um, so then the question is, are you going? <laughs> are you going to just wear these on your hip, or are you going to keep them stashed? Uh, I'll conceal carry. That sounds like a good idea. I don't want to scare anyone. Right. Thanks. Okay. Let's see here. So I have like a uh, pocket in my. I have my cyber arm that has a blade that comes out of it. Can I throw my gun in there? Yeah. <laughs> a secret. A secret chamber in my winter soldier arm. Well, no. You could put it. You could put it in like a pocket. I would believe. Um, okay. Is that a bit? Cool. Go ahead and both of you can make a deception check. Uh, let's see, do we have that? I don't have deception. Oh, yeah, I do. Okay. Uh, I don't, so just a regular roll. Yep, and you would be at minus three. I got five then. Oh. I have uh, 11. Okay. So with. with uh, Beth Smith only having a five, you can see that there's a notable uh, bulge where she's trying to hide this gal's pistol. Uh, but <laughs> it's under one of my boobs. <laughs> yes, yeah. One boob is slightly higher than the other one because that's where you're hiding your gal's pistol. Perfect. I'll never suspect it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just spend the whole time being like, hey, buddy, eyes up here. Eyes up here. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the eyes painted on, painted on a 15 millimeter miniature. You know, they're. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on just a minute. I'll be right back. Okay, me too. I'm going to take a second. Yeah, when you guys uh, go with a concealed carry, you don't mess around. You're carrying around a couple of electromagnetic auto pistols. <laughs> Machine pistols, really. <laughs> So, you guys, 
reassemble and, and kind of stash your, your pistols and uh, come up with a good hiding spot where you can conceal these and carry them around with you just in case. And you kind of bed down for the night and you, you're only asleep for a couple of hours when you are awoken by a, a bang and you can feel the entire city kind of shake and the power flickers and then you you get red emergency lights red means scary red means scary gotta get up gotta get up grab the tools okay right. let's go for the administrator and see how he's administrating so you open the door to your suite to go out into the apartments area and people are running in a panic all over the place. Are they yelling fire? No. Um, <laughs> running around? <laughs> nah. No, no. Maybe. Um, nobody's yelling fire, but you see everybody, see, there seems to be no cohesion on what they're doing. Everybody seems to be doing something different. Um, but all of them are appear to be trying to grab whatever they can and get it all uh, together. Like they're prepping for an evacuation. Well, I guess we should too. Because <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to trust my uh, trust everybody else. I guess, or you know, it's like if we don't pack up the stuff and it gets destroyed, then we can't fix anything. And if we do pack it up, it's no emergency. Okay, so you. I think you're. I think you're on the right track with looking for the administrator to find out. But I mean, there's gotta be like a science crew that we saw on the floor. I mean, there must be people there, mechanics there, whatever that we could look for. Because if people are getting ready to evacuate, that seems like probably a mechanical problem. All right, like, and fail. So I agree. Let's like pack up the stuff, but then. There must be a engineering department or something we can find. Yeah. All right. So it take with the throngs of people all moving about at random, it takes you about a good 30 minutes to get to the administrator's offices. And you get to the main area, and just as you're coming in, um, the alarm klaxons have now turned off. The lighting is still red for emergency. And you come in, and you see... Um, Sinclair Krenoff uh, kind of uh, directing people around. Um, both of you make an intelligence check. Oh, I'm so apparently. I thought the shiny. I got to say, guys, Oh, wow. Um, yep, yeah, that's, that's an average failure. <laughs> I have legs. That's what I noticed. <laughs> I, I rolled a 9 and my um, rank is plus 2, so it's 11 altogether. So, Beth Smith, you notice that the directions that Sinclair Krenoff is giving sound suspiciously like um, a low-key preparation for evacuation of the entire city. Um, he turns around and notices you and says, oh, I... I'm so glad that you're here. We're we're uh, experiencing a major crisis. It seems that three pseudo squids attacked a cargo sub named the Nilla, and the Nilla, uh, they these three squids. We've never seen them quite this aggressive, but they all three of them attacked the submarine as a pack, and one of them got twisted up in in the. Uh, in the rear screw and just got mashed which caused the Nilla to be unable to rudder and it rammed into the habitation zone uh, right around where the secondary reactor is um, it is the the um, squid during because of the collision with the city the Nilla um, ruptured the front of the cargo sub and 
fell to the bottom 1100 meters and is resting nose down on the the floor of the sea and the squid are feeding on the dead sailors that that were in that forward compartment um, we've got reports that there are maybe perhaps a dozen uh, crew members of the Nilla that have survived but um, there's no way to rescue them not with all these squid around and worse than that uh, the habitat 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 zone has um, suffered rupture and uh, is now uh, there's some leaks and water is seeping into the secondary reactor and uh, we don't we're not fearing a reactor explosion so much but all that water is going to take the reactor offline generate a lot of steam and that steam itself could cause an explosion so um, we are in dire straits all right um are there people working on the um the leaks currently is anybody directed over there uh, there are attempts to try to repair the leaks um because the citizenry is uh is panicking it's difficult for the work crews to get to where they need to be and um um, quite honestly, if the, the secondary reactor goes out, the pumps that are pumping the water out are going to fail. Um, really, right now, our only solution is to get the main reactor online. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask Ching Shi if like, any of their psionic powers could be used to help with the school situation. Ooh. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I have uh, Aquaman. <laughs> um, I really wish I did. So I have telepath, uh, telepathic, telekinetic, and aware. So telepathic, you're you're being a telepath. Okay. It's not like you're really going to be able to contact the squid. Um, I mean, yeah, you can, but what you're getting back is a completely alien intelligence to you. They're not. Um, they're not okay. sentient so much. They are intelligent, but they're not sentient. Great. What about, so if I, wherever the attack, I mean, are they attacking the entire base, or are they just attacking the reactor? So, yeah. these squids seem to be really pissed off. Um, they attacked the sub, and now they are kind of throwing themselves against the city itself. They're not really doing much damage, but they are looking for a way in. Okay. So, um, what I'm thinking is if I could, I mean, undoubtedly there's like debris on the sea floor. Yes. Um, All the activity so has, has, when the, when the Nilla crashed into the sea floor, a big cloud of silt has built up. And so visibility is extremely poor. Okay. So, well, I'm thinking, could I like <coughs> take debris, wherever the leak is coming from, could I take debris from the ocean floor and like use it to, to hold it against the building where it's leaking with my telekinesis mm. so that we're not taking on water? Mm. So that if that doesn't work, could I like whip around debris around the squid and like chum them? <laughs> <laughs> um... I will allow you to, to attempt either of those. However, it is going to be a fairly difficult, um, a fairly difficult task. Hold on here. Okay. Let's see here. I only also, I mean, it may not be possible because I only have four points. Um, <clears throat> well. I mean, I do have a couple of doses of drugs to improve my situation, but... So you're, for your psionic range to do, to get the debris, you'd be looking at very long range, uh, which is between, oh, no, it's further than that. Um, um, so that is going to be, you would have to make a 12 plus roll to grab the debris using psionics. So let's just go work on the reactor. That's yeah, let's, work. let's try it. So, <clears throat> I guess I could 
say sort of thing, but plug it from the inside rather than from the outside. I was thinking like use ocean floor debris to plug it like a band-aid, but I could just as easily do it from the inside. Possibly. Like like I said, Sinclair Kranoff has people that are working trying to um, not only keep the pumps running, but um, trying to seal leaks. Um, they're right now um, a an enterprising uh, ship crew back at the starport. Um, they've already the the starport's already been notified of the issue. Um, an enterprising crew from that starport has the idea of landing their ship uh, in the sea and taking on as many um, evacuees as they can. The problem, of course, is um, you've got 200,000 people that are all trying to run up stairwells that are made for you know two people passing and brushing shoulders. Um, so right. there's not, I mean, even if there were 100 ships that size, there wouldn't be enough to get everybody off. Um, and the cargo yeah, subs... It sounds like that's the only solution. Yeah. It up to where the habitat zone is because of all the squid. Mm -hmm. um, Sinclair says, uh, well, he agrees with you that getting the main reactor online um, seems to be the only clear solution. He himself will, will go down, um, he will lead you down there, and if you decide that you don't want to go, um, he'll go down on his own. You both realize that him going down on his own isn't going to solve anything. Uh, because if, if he could have gone down on his own to get the reactor working, you wouldn't be here. Yeah. But you know, the people need to be administrated, don't they? Yeah, it seems really irresponsible. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to have a conversation with Sinclair now, but it seems really irresponsible that they don't have emergency drills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you not plan ahead for this shit? <laughs> District 13 from the other day were like, they knew how to get underground quickly and protect themselves because they were under threat. Like, it seems like if you're going to live in an underwater base, you really need to figure this out. <laughs> have, you ever seen, have you ever seen the Archer episode where they go down to Sea Lab? <laughs> Later, we don't have to have it now, but he's gonna get a piece of my mind that he doesn't run emergency drills at some point. So, do you want Krenhoff to go with you, or do you want him to stay here to administrate things? I think. Oh, go ahead, Captain. Uh, people, people, the people need it more. I, I don't think that they should be in a hurry to evacuate because won't that just make up a whole bunch of tasty treats for the squid? I mean. That seems like putting out more chum in the water. True that. Yeah, I, I don't think I can convince people, unless our popularity um, and the hope that it does would make us better to like announce that or something. So right now, the bulk of the, the civilian population is in a panic. They're already moving towards the top of the, the city. All right, well can't do much about that then I guess. Yeah, he needs right. to stay here. Is there a way to contact him um, with the comms? Yeah, you can use your mobile comms to contact the administration building. Okay, so we'll call him if, he, if, if we need to, but he, he needs to remind people that what's out there is it's the equal threat to stay, more or less. So. Right. Okay. Um, he leads you to the um, to the closed pressure doors that had the red tape on them. And he cuts through the red tape and opens those pressure doors. Um, the, cham the, the chamber beyond, <clears throat> you see that there is a, like a small movie theater size, like uh, stairwell that leads down. Um, and he says, uh, this is the, th this is the uh, way to the lower decks. Um, I I think, uh, like I told you, I think that there is a black market scavenger situation going on where people are using this area to get below. So there must be a way, if you go through here, there must be a way down into the lower decks to the work area. Um, and he says um, to that 
that you're free to use this area. Um, uh, and he asks, he says, um, there may be scavengers still working down there. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, how dangerous they are. Do, do you need anything from the security locker? Uh, Cam Kevin, are you muted? Yeah, I am. I'm sorry. Um, okay. I was thinking like a knife and a stun gun, like the things that were allowed to have, and that wouldn't uh, decompress the, or cause like a leak if we fired them off, you know, kind of thing. So he has. Um, he doesn't have a stun gun um, in the security locker. He has an auto pistol with two magazines. And he has a, a shotgun that is loaded with uh, six rounds, and there are an additional six rounds in a sling on the stock that he can give it, you guys. It'd be hard if we're, if, this place is kind of big. If we're pointing away from the exterior wall and fire a shotgun, is it, is it scatter shot or Correct. the other? Yeah, scatter shot. It is. And, and the auto pistol, the reason why they have an auto pistol and a shotgun for security purposes is because both of those weapons won't have enough uh, to actually puncture the the uh, pressure hull. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. <coughs> I'll take whatever um, Ching Shi does not want. I like the shotgun. Okay. Okay, I'll take the auto pistol then. Okay. Uh, so, you can, so Ching Shi... Um, under your weapons, you can add a shotgun. Okay. It is TL4. Wait, I'm not disorganized. Okay, shotgun. Uh, TL4. TL4. Range is 50 meters. Okay. Damage is 4d6. Wait, 50 meters. 4d6. Uh, okay. Kilograms is 4. And for Beth Smith, the auto pistol is TL6. All right. Range is 10 meters. Damage is 3d6 minus 3. Right. Kilograms is 1. And magazine is 15. And you've got two spare mags. Okay. All right, that's all. Now, naturally, your Gauss pistols are far better than this. Yeah, um, but if they're gonna tear, uh, if they're gonna tear yeah. a hole in the hole. Yeah, I, I mean, a Gauss pistol itself um, does 3D6, so uh, there could be a possibility that it could shoot a hole in the wall, but I, I don't know. Um, the benefit of the Gauss pistol is, of course, auto too. But that's it. You know, you're not probably going to run into that many where you have to spray and pray. So. Okay. If we're ready to descend. Now, do we have like? Uh, I, I, for lack of a better word, like scuba suits. I mean, we have back suits for space, but if we're working on the reactor and it brings a leak, I mean, so are, so we're gonna die from the pressure anyway. You have to use the yeah. The, 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 the pressure will. Have. The good news is the pressure will get you before the um, uh, before oh, the drowning. the drowning does. Um, okay. But he but tells you that there are. Exactly put them with the vacuum of space, maybe it wouldn't push us into butter. I don't know. So he tells you that in the work zone, the lower work zone, there are um, atmospheric diving suits and, he, and most likely uh, what they call VDO or v very deep operations diving suits. Uh, but he doesn't think, he does not suspect that you'll have to go outside. Um, you know, but those will be available in the lower work zone. Okay, because, yeah, he doesn't expect us to need to go outside, but he also has never done an emergency drill. 
Correct. Out. So I don't think he's very smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to pay much attention to what this asshole says. But, but <laughs> it's, 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 if the diabetes are available that night, then I don't have any questions. Yes, there are there are suits available. Cool. And as you're moving to the uh, to the uh, sealed off area, you see this uh, evacuation notice on the walls. <clears throat> and So, you enter into the sealed off area. Um, and as you're, you're going in, he says, um, uh, Godspeed and good luck uh, find, uh, getting your way down and repairing the reactor. He says, I, I wish that I could do something for the, the survivors in the Nilla, but uh, I simply cannot afford to spend much time on that. Uh, we've got hundreds of thousands of people that need to be uh, dealt with right now and I can't afford to spend any time on you know a dozen people that are trapped in a, in a damaged submarine on the ocean floor um, but Godspeed please get the reactor up you're our only hope and he seals the pressure doors behind you well I suppose if we get this fixed quickly enough we can then make a mission to go out and save the submarine people if they're still alive that could be a possibility yes okay all right, let's do it. So, as you're moving through this section, <clears throat> um, it doesn't appear to be as damaged as um, as as what you were expecting, because you were told that everything beyond these these pressure doors is damaged. But you make your way down the stairwell to the next lower deck, which on their their computer diagram shows as being partially flooded but you're not seeing any water um, lighting in here um, what lighting there is is flickering but you you notice immediately that several of the light fixtures have been taken apart um, wiring has been pulled out bulbs are missing um, you can ascertain that it looks like somebody has come through here and looted a lot of the electronics part. There's, um, you know, panels on the wall where the computers have been pulled out and parts have been taken. Um, so you're seeing immediate evidence that looters have been through here scavenging parts. Um, and you make your way through. This seems to be a... Um, this first area, that this deck that you're on, seems to be a um, higher end. What you know, back when the city was um, at its height, this looks like it was a um, high end residential area. You see that there are entire movie theaters in here, um, high end apartments with um, uh, Sarah Metal uh, views of the ocean floor, um, things like that. Uh, all of the closets in the apartments have been rifled through. Um, you see a couple of pieces of clothing and whatnot laying around on the floors of the apartments, but you don't see anybody um, actually moving around in here. Um, the halls, the, the floor appears to have like a, a deep red carpet, uh, very lush carpeting, uh, of course worn with age. And there are brass rails along the walls um, leading down stairwells and whatnot. It's a very fancy looking area. Um, the, <clears throat> the doors themselves, um, they're, they're sliding pressure doors, but they have like, um, the manual latches are uh, made of brass fixtures with crystal. So it, it's a very, it looks pretty fancy, not something that you would expect to see in this underwater city. Almost looks yeah. steampunk. <clears throat> Everybody roll a recon roll. And you can add your intelligence modifier to that. If you don't have recon, you are at a minus three. Six. 
Ten? And um, it adds up to ten. Ooh, ten's pretty good. So, <clears throat> on a ten, um, you notice that um, you can see that there is some traffic leading to the lower decks um, that, that people have actually been through here and you're, you're seeing um, some signs of that um, like maybe somebody cut their hand and you see a small blood sp uh, sp swath on the wall um, or um, you see um, sections of the carpet where there are boot prints in the in this lush carpet going down into the lower deck and as you start to go down in the lower deck the lighting seems to get more and more dim and it's not long before you're actually walking through and the carpet is wet and you can see that there are trickles of water moving down the walls um, as you're moving along <clears throat> um, uh, Ching Shi Yes. Make an intelligence check. Okay. I really did bad on my last one, so hopefully I'm a little more focused. I'm just so incredulous at the poor management of the base. Uh, nine. Okay. You hear a the sound of a cat meowing. I'm going to go investigate because I'm afraid it belongs to the little girl, that the little girl that have her cat. So, down here somehow. Um, make a right. make a recon check, uh, and you're at minus three because you don't have recon, and it's a cat. <laughs> well, um, that is twelve. Okay, so you you actually just made it. Um, you find the you find that it is indeed the little girl's cat, and it is hiding um, in a lower vent uh, that has been pulled out, and it's hiding behind some wires in this vent. And it seems to recognize you and is meowing. Its little feet are are wet, and there's there's water dripping down inside there. Like, I, go ahead. I missed what happened there because I had, I don't know, I had to reconnect to Wi-Fi or something. So we found a cat? Yes. Was, yeah, yeah Ching Shi found the little girl's cat is hiding in a opened vent in the hallway uh, that you're moving through. Well, I went, I went and followed the cat because I was afraid that the little girl was down here too somehow. Like she ran away when she was scared. But no, it's just the cat. Hiding. I have a one in animals, but I'm going to try and see if we can get it to be our buddy, like um, Rip Ripley's cat and... Uh, oh, uh, and yeah. Alien. Yeah, Jonesy. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and make an animal handling check, and you can add your EDU to that. I, I got um, eight. My EDU is plus two, so that's ten, and then I have a one in animal. So it'd be like 11. Okay, so yeah, the you were able to coax the cat out, and the cat is uh, very friendly to you. <laughs> um, oh, that's cute. Do you want to take the cat along with you? Yeah, we can um, ride in um, something. We have like wheelie carts for all our crap, I'm sure. Oh yeah, you <laughs> you can put him in one of your in, in one of your uh, toolkits if you'd like. <laughs> Can I use my awareness to see if the little girl's down here? Sure, go ahead and let's see here. How does that work? Is this like detect light? Can she, does she have to pay yeah. a specific person to, to, to detect or will it tell us if there's like scavengers abound? Um, That's true. Can I use my to see if there's anyone down here? So yeah, go ahead and make a roll. Uh, roll two d six and add your psi uh, modifier to it. Okay. Psi modifier. I might take these. I think I find it. Uh, so that's one nine. 
Uh, so, you do not detect that the little girl is down here. Your guess is that the cat, in all the confusion, probably ran away. Um, okay. However, you are detecting, your life detection does pick up that there are other people down here. Okay. Do I get it? Isn't that detecting people? Are they like workers or are they sneaky like looters? Is there a way to you know different? Um that would be a different skill. Let's see here. Let me look at life detection. So life detection, um it will distinguish between intelligent beings and back from bacteria or unimportant animals in the area. Um, it functions best at detecting intelligent minds. Um, so you you detect that there are people, um, but and that costs you one psionics point. If you want to, I just start taking some drugs. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> juice up. Um, You could, there's a couple of options. So you could maybe you spend a side point to use telepathy um, to, to read basic emotions and feelings. Um, the other thing that you could do, you could spend two psionics points and try to read surface thoughts. Uh, what do you think, Captain? This is pretty important information. Um, so, do you have your drugs, right, if you need them? I do. All right. I, I, I think I carry them on myself. I mean, I think if it, that seems to be a very valuable, the side drugs seem to be valuable enough, I would carry them on my person all the time. Okay. So, yeah. I, I Well, I want to know if there's hostile people down here. Or, yeah. Yeah. They're panicked. So, yeah, I'm going to use this resurface thought. Okay. Psionic point. Okay, go ahead and make a roll and add your psionics uh, modifier to it. Okay. Uh, don't tug. Don't tug. <laughs> and you can add your okay. intellect score to that. Intellect two. Okay, that's good. Eight, nine, eleven. Okay, so. The surface thoughts that you're picking up, um, you detect um, surface thoughts from about six people um, that uh, they are aware that there is some kind of crisis going on. They seem to be in, um, I wouldn't necessarily say panic mode, but they are um, highly agitated at, at the situation and they are searching for um, equipment that may help them get out. Okay. Okay. I don't know if it seems nefarious. I mean, that seems like a natural... Well, the, the nefarious part comes in in that um, you are detecting uh, surface thoughts where some of them are talking to one another or thinking that uh, they shouldn't be down here, and if they weren't down here, none of this would have happened. Oh, okay, so they're looking, they're down there looking for something in the confusion. Right. Taking advantage of, taking advantage of everyone's distractions to look for something important. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Well, obviously, I share that information with my captain and just let her know we need to be on alert. Okay. All right, and then we can proceed. So, uh, do we know the, the way to the reactor? Yeah, and the surface thoughts that you're reading, you are feeling that they are below you. Okay. Um, so you you descend further, you and your cat. <clears throat> you descend further into the uh, restricted section, and uh, it doesn't take very long before you are moving through. Um, the, the carpeting is no longer just wet. Now you're moving through ankle deep water. Oh, okay. Uh, you've descended uh, a good two or three decks 
and uh, it seems that the the partial flooding of this particular area is getting worse and worse the lower you go. That makes sense. It isn't too long before you come into an area and you can hear you can hear voices up up ahead and at this point the lighting in here has now is now dark. Uh, you're moving with your own flashlights. There's a flashlight attached to both the uh, to the barrel of the shotgun and to the um, auto pistol. Um, you know, flashlights and glow sticks are are what you're moving by, and um, you can see down the hall the 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 damage in this area is a lot more extensive. There's debris on the floor. Um, like I said, you're in ankle deep water, and you can see down at the end of the hall, uh, amongst some debris, uh, that there are flashlights moving around. There's obviously somebody down there. What would you guys like to do? Um, I, I know. Uh, what is military training tell you to do in this kind of situation? I wonder. Well, <laughs> military training, I mean, you have essentially... I would think it would depend on the objective, right? Like, how do you do... I guess we should announce ourselves as, like, engineers and say there's a, there's a current evacuation order. Right. People are and, attacking and trying to ascend. That might be... Yeah, we don't care what it is you're after. Whatever you're looking for, we're not interested. We just want to get... To the reactor to make sure we don't end up dead. Yeah. Okay. Um, Hold on here. I do not have anything that would help me be sneaky. So. Huh. I just thought if they knew everyone was um, trying to get out upstairs, maybe they'd go root around in their rooms since they're empty now. Mm -hmm. So. That's true. It, they want loot. There's probably some up there right now. Okay. It sounds like they're looking for something specific. Mm. Okay. Because it was like, if, if it's not down here, this wasn't worth it. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know what this one. So that's why I was like, I would, I would yes, announce ourselves, but then say, look, if you're down here looking for something, we don't care. We just want to fix the reactor and keep everybody alive. Who, uh, so, who is making the? Uh, who's who's? Who are? Which one of you is is declaring yourselves? Me, okay. I'm Steph Smith of the Obi Wan Jabroni, captain of the Obi Wan Jabroni, and there's a current evacuation order. We're trying to get through to fix the reactor. Go ahead and make a persuade check. Okay, let me see how much I got. Okay. Well, okay. I'm bold and eleven plus one is twelve. Okay. Um. So you declare yourself, and you see all of the flashlights turn toward your turn toward you. You're just outside of the range of the lights, but you can see the he the lamps are all pointed towards you, and you hear one of them say, "Uh, uh are you engineers?" I am, yes. <clears throat> and you can hear coming down the hall, you can't make out what they're saying, but you hear several voices whispering to one another. Can I make out what they're saying? Uh, do you want to make a, another sur read surface thoughts check? So I get my four points plus my drugs. The drugs I only get to use once, but like after I've used them, I get one point for my drugs. Yes. Okay, so I've got the drugs out. Yes, I want to read service thoughts. Okay, go ahead and make a roll and add your um, sight modifier to it. Okay. Uh, seven. So, you're not getting a very clear reading, but you can make, okay. what you can make out is that um, they the thought that you're getting, uh, you can't make out any specifics about a plan, but the general idea is that 
um, they think that maybe you have something they want. Mm. It's not really much good if it's dead, is it? <laughs> There's that, yeah. <clears throat> Uh, they respond, hold on a second here. They respond um, that, um, make your way towards us slowly. We've got you covered. I'm gonna look at Ching Chi and the like. I don't know. Give me a look or something about if we should proceed or hang back. Uh, I'm. I think that the the best is probably to convince them that it's in their best interest to let us fix the reactor because if it's if it's two to six and they want to slow us down and search for stuff then we got to convince them like we we can handle whatever it is that you're looking for after afterwards so you're you're not like you think that you're not, not too right. concerned about moving forward okay we'll start walking forward slowly okay uh you start to slowly slosh your way through the water towards them and you hear that's far enough now you can just go ahead and leave any of your engineering equipment down and we'll go ahead and relieve you of that it won't do you much good if you're dead <laughs> there's there's giant squids involved <laughs> <laughs> You hear a woman's voice come out. Just, We're not afraid of no pea squids. Go ahead and roll initiative. So you, for initiative, roll 2d6, and you can add either your dexterity modifier or your intelligence modifier, whichever is higher. Okay. Yeah. Six. 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 Oh, man. Um, I seriously got five. That sucks. All right. Okay, so Beth Smith got a five. What did Ching Shi get? Ching Shi got a six. Okay. Oh, I don't die completely. That'd be... Uh, uh, nah. Uh, uh, Ching Shi, make a Raycon check. Oh, why do I have to keep doing this? I don't have Raycon. I know, so you're minus three. But but you can you can make it with a boon. So you can you can roll three dice and take the higher roll. Okay. Oh, thanks, because it was went from a seven to a twelve. You see two of the flashlights ahead of you go out. Okay. Like they're they're using the darkness to their advantage. What do you want to do since you've seen this? So, uh, before we really get into that, hold on a second. And I will explain um, actions in a combat round. So, um, this works a very similar to um, it works very similar but more fluid very similar to D&D 5th edition so <clears throat> on your turn you can perform a significant action or you can or I'm sorry you can perform a significant action and one minor action movement is considered a minor action so it's not it's not its own thing or you can forego doing a significant action and perform three minor actions so examples of significant actions are, of course, attack. Um, you can make a melee attack or a ranged attack. Um, those are pretty basic significant actions. Minor actions 
uh, might include taking the minor action to aim, uh, which will give you a plus one to your attack roll. Um, you can um, change your stance so you can crouch or lie prone. Um, you, a minor action would be drawing or reloading a gun, or you can do movement. Um, it also includes miscellaneous actions like spotting a good sniping position, identifying equipment, or picking something up off the ground. And then of course there are free actions like, you know, crying or, or saying something. Um, those would be considered free actions. So okay. your minor action was uh, noticing their, their movement, uh, that they shut their lights off and that they, they are using the darkness to their advantage. So what do you want to do with your significant action or you can do an additional two minor actions. Um, I feel like I want to take the, take a couple of minor actions just oh. to, find, to get to a defensive position. Okay. So, you know, making sure that no one can sneak up behind me by backing into a wall or corner. Um, and then also probably trying to move out and around the four that I know where they are. Okay. Because you said there were six um, friendlies and two of them turned their lights out. So I want to sort of mirror what those two sneaky pants did and uh, take a defensive position and see if I can, you know, get close enough to see what they're up to. Okay. Uh, hold on here. I have something for this. Awesome. guys so first of all I need to give you guys some tokens um, I don't have any decent uh, traveler tokens um, just bear with me here so they'll probably look like D&D tokens because they are D&D tokens I'm like excited enough about this so I'm like looking at fiber for getting a cartoon drawing of my I really I I'm glad you are enjoying this. I I, I love Traveler. No doubt about it. It, just, it makes sense. It just feels less clunky than Spidey. It it is, to be real honest. It it really is. Uh, I feel like sometimes with Spidey it's like and if there's a full moon you get to add these points, but if you do it backwards <laughs> While saying the alphabet, you can add three points, and then if you, and it's just it's too much. Yeah, it, it, yeah, that that's uh, not uncommon. Um, I'm gonna say this spell by hopping on one foot and. <laughs> if you're facing the south, south, then. All right, so there is Ching Shi and Yeah, I, I was doing a little bit of searching earlier to see if there were some better tokens available, and I didn't really find any, but I will admit I only did a cursory look, so it could possibly be better. Um, this works. But this will work for now. 
Totally. All right, so now, oops, that's not what I wanted. There we go. And now for these guys. are dropping so incredibly huge but So that is the hallway that you are seeing. So Ching Shi, um, I would say if you're taking cover, you're like in this little apartment building, um, kind of duck behind the door, and that is going to grant you a cover bonus of, uh, we will say, a plus eight to your um, so it's a plus eight that they have to to the to the uh, difficulty that they're going to have to use to hit you. Uh, so, so movement and taking cover um, was one uh, minor action. What would you like to do with your third minor action? Okay. Like, if I'm at, cause I would say, like, oh, I might crouch, but if I'm already covered well enough, then there's really no need. So, yeah. You could use your minor action to take aim, which on your next, on the next round would give you a plus one to your attack. Okay, then I'll, I'll do that. Okay. I'll take aim. Last one, yeah. All right. Beth Smith, what would you like to do? I would like to take out the Gauss pistol and press it against the wall here. Okay. And order them out under threat of decompression. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> oh, shit. So the first, so you're going to do three minor actions. Your first minor action is to draw your Gauss pistol and, and point it at the, the wall. Um, the second is going to be a persuasion check, um, which I will grant you a boon on because um, that's a big gun. All right. I got a one persuasion, so that's good. Okay. Uh, that's a one. All right. <laughs> You're like, I'm not afraid to die. <laughs> I'm not afraid of the boy. You should be afraid of me, huh? Let's see. Got eight. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. You got an eight? I hope that's good enough. Yeah, an eight. So. <laughs> you can hear down the hall. Oh shit, she's serious. <laughs> um, uh, what would you like to do with your third minor action? Um, I'd like to order them out. Yeah. Tell them, tell them that they're going to leave right now, or I'm going to kill everybody in this hall. <laughs> okay. You can't be a Sanchez and not be a terrorist, you know? That, right? That's true. That's true. You have to have at least some minor terror in your in your actions. I got the crazy eyes too. So. <laughs> okay. 
this guy, uh, because he is his flashlight is off, um, he has there's a plus two to hit him because it is dark. Um, he yells out that um, that he yells out to the to the other scavengers. We got to take her out before she does something drastic. She'll kill us all. And he takes a shot. Okay. Uh, but he probably isn't going to be very good at it. Huh. So he takes a shot with an auto pistol and he misses you uh, because it is dark and he has no flashlight on. Um, and then he moves and he takes cover behind here. Uh, this scavenger moves and takes cover behind here and takes a shot at you but he misses as well she runs and hides in here because she's a Nancy Pants she opens up this this uh, well no she can't open that door not quick enough um, she backs up and he moves here and he will take a shot at Ching Shi, which probably is going to miss terribly because he's got to get a 16 or better. And he gets five. So uh, auto pistol bullets are ricocheting off of shit. Uh, Ching Shi, what would you like to do? So I'm eight. I've already eight, right? Correct. So, so this guy, this guy, uh, is a has a plus eight because he's he is um, covered. This guy has a plus eight because he's covered. Um, this guy here, on the other hand, you could drill. Um, that's my target. That's that's who I'm going for. Okay. So then the question is, are you shooting with the shotgun or are you shooting with the Gauss pistol? Uh, I'm going to have, I, I should have thought it was I mean, with my Gauss. Okay. If that's not an option. Yeah, that, that's completely an option. I would put down the, the shotgun, so if I need it again, I'll have to just use my action to pick it up. But I'm not the Gauss pistol. 